through 26. He's still on the throne. Dave, I'm going to say I'm glad God's been good in my life. And, it's a, and in that song it says, when I've done all I can and I can't stand, he's always been there. But I'm glad when I'm not doing all I can and I come back and I say I'm sorry and he can fix everything I've screwed up. And he, he, can, he can fix everything that I've messed up. And, and, uh, and he forgives me and he loves me. And, he, and, he, and even though I'm not deserving of it, he can just he can just be there with us. And, you know, I can look back at the times when I wasn't living right. And, uh, and even though, you know, we... Took my, we took our son when, when he wasn't even a year old to get his stomach cut open. They told me, uh, uh, you know, that was just a scary situation. And even though I wasn't living the best uh, that I could, he still touched, touched yeah. me with his hand on right. right. I was telling Pete the other day, when Sadie was just a little baby, I mean, she just wasn't even a year old, they told us that, you know, she had fluid on her brain. She'd never be right. And uh, and I wasn't living right. I wasn't even hardly praying right. I wasn't even praying for her. I wasn't even doing what I, what I should have been doing. And, we took her to Charlotte, and, and, uh, and we was just scared to death. You know, we just we thought, well, our baby's not, you know, she's she's sick, and you know, she's got stuff going on with her. And uh, even though I wasn't praying, there was people praying for her, and you know, and, and we took her in there, and they they said we don't know what they seen. She's perfectly fine. And what I mean to say is, you know, he's always been faithful. He's been wow. yeah. faithful, and I just thank God that He's put us in a place where we're at today, and He's fixed everything. Right. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's good.
Y'all pray for me. I, I don't normally sing by myself. I'll be honest with you, I don't really care to sing. I'm, I'd rather stand in the background and not be heard, but I want to stand up and do my part for the Lord. Uh, I'm going to try this song because I can just go ahead and tell you it's not. Boy, I've been through enough tonight. Amen. Lord's been good to me in my life. He's changed my life and changed me from the man that I was into the man that I am today. And I'm, I'm still a long ways off from what I should be for Him, but I'm just going to stand here and praise Him tonight. Amen. Go ahead. I'll probably sing it by this key. I'll try it. When I, when I first when I first started walking with the Lord, I did not fully trust Him. And now I long for me to understand that I could. And so through the You'd think the longer you're in this way and in this thing, the less you'd need the Lord. But I see that at the very opposite. The longer I'm in this thing, the more I know I got to have Him. Amen. I don't get to feeling the Lord like I ought to. I get worried and nervous. Amen. I don't know how this crowd makes it. It's a, they don't walk with God hand in hand. I don't know how they. I don't know how they get by. I'll be. Uh, I'll be real quick tonight. Paul won't be before you very, very long at all. Uh, you endured enough this morning. I'm just going to give you a quick little old thought that I had on my mind that the Lord gave me today. And uh, I'll just, I want to run this by you. 
and uh, then I'll let you go to the house. But I want to preach tonight, if the Lord will help me, on trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. And I'm going to hit some, uh, uh, some stories right here in the Word of God that, uh, where these men uh, trusted God, and we'll see uh, that He never let them down. And I'm serving the exact same God. Uh, that these folks right here served. Uh, uh, Branson, we think sometimes we read in God's Word where uh, God done all these miracles and, and, and we look around and, and we think, well, God ain't doing miracles like that anymore. Well, you're not looking hard enough, church. God does miracles every single day. Uh, you're looking at a miracle right here uh, that God spared my life. Doctor said I ought not be able to walk, talk. I should have been dead, but God spared my life, and at the time, I sure didn't know why, but he knowed one day that I'd be carrying this gospel, amen, uh, to some lost people and trying to help folks along the way, and uh, it's just a miracle that I'd even uh, be up here. I was so backwards and shy uh, when Aunt Catherine done the youth choir. Uh, they'd sing a little old song, and they'd sing, uh, Do You Love Jesus? And everybody would sing it, and they'd just come through, and they'd say, And Bo, do you love Jesus? And all you had to do was say, Oh, yes, I love Jesus. And they'd go to the next kid, and I told Catherine, I said, You call on me, I won't be in the youth choir never again. They'd go through every kid up here. And I was really making more of a spectacle out of myself being shy than not doing it because every kid up there would do it but me. And then God tried to call me to preach. I'm like, Lord, there ain't no way. There ain't no way. And there ain't no way I'll be able to preach tonight if God don't help me. It takes God. If you want to turn in your Bibles to Daniel uh, chapter number 3. Uh, and while you're turning, I'm, I'm going to go to Proverbs, but you go ahead and go to Daniel uh, chapter number 3. The Bible said, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Ain't you, that's a promise. God said, if you trust in me and acknowledge me in not some of your ways, see, that's where we blow them promises in the word of God that God gives us. We'll, we'll, we'll blow them because he said, in all thy ways, acknowledge me. We'll find ourselves over here where we ought not to be and say, well, God, uh, you said if I trust you, you'd drink my pain. Yeah, if you acknowledge me in all your ways. And we're serving a God that's an all-time God and an always God. You don't serve him when you want to. You don't serve him when you feel like it. You serve him every day, all the time, from daylight to dark. And he said, if we do that, he'll direct our path. All right, turn with me to... Daniel chapter number three. Now I'm going to skip around. I, I hope I, I'll try to tell you the verse of the man so you don't get lost. But I'm just going to skip around for sake of time or because I've got a lot of reading to do here. Chapter three, verse number one. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura and in the providence of Babylon. This tower, uh, to give you perspective of how tall it was, 90 feet tall. I mean, this wasn't some little old Christmas tree statue. This thing was 90 feet tall and nine foot wide. When old Nebuchadnezzar had this thing built, I uh, mean, he wanted everybody in town uh, to be able to see it uh, from wherever you was. It didn't matter what direction you was looking. Uh, he wanted you to see that. And think about him. He wanted to get the glory and the honor. And, he, and then they had a herald come out here in verse number four. A herald, uh, that's where your newspaper comes from. These men went out and they told the news what was going on. And there was a herald come out and cried about. He said, to you is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at the time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the sorcery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. And whosoever falleth not down and worship shall the same hour be cast in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And there in verse 12, and there were certain Jews whom has set over the affairs of the providence of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. You can be seated. I'll go on and read a little bit more, but I want to stop right here uh, for just a few minutes. Let me see what time it is. I promised y'all to be short tonight. Uh, we see right here that he built this image up. And he said, wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, 
He said, we're not going to do it at a certain time. But he said, any time that I call on the music to be played, he said, wherever you're at, you're going to fall down and you're going to worship me. He said, you're going to worship me no matter what you're doing. I'm the most important thing in the world. And if you don't, he said, that very same hour, uh, you'll be cast in. Uh, to the fiery furnace. And boy, they, they begin to blow that old trumpet and the sack and the harp and all that. And every time they would hear that, uh, everybody, they, they might be somebody might do a carpenter work. And there's a drive in a nail. And boy, they're scared of old Nebuchadnezzar. They're just worried about him. And all of a sudden, they'd hear that. And man, they'd just fall down right there where they at. I mean, it didn't matter. Uh, they'd fall down and worship that king. You know why? Because they didn't want to be thrown into the fiery furnace. But you know what? Uh, that brought some old pilgrims in there uh, from another country. We preached on pilgrims the other day. And there's three old pilgrims in there uh, that's just passing through. Uh, they wasn't from that place. Uh, they didn't want to be in that place. Uh, but God lined it up where they could be there. And the Bible said that they purposed in their heart uh, that they was going to serve God. Uh, they wasn't going to partake of the king's wine and the king's meat. They said, just give us beans and lentils. And he said, try our God. And in a few, I think it was ten days later, uh, they come in there and the countenance of those old pilgrims, uh, it looked better than all the rest. Uh, they trusted God. Uh, God got them through many times in many situations and now we've got these boys uh, that's foreigners and they were so head and shoulders above everybody else. That's the way God's children are. Amen. Uh, we're children of the king. Uh, we are somebody and they were set over the affairs of all the thing in the land and these people begin to see this and they took notice and they didn't like it and old King Nebuchadnezzar uh, he built this big old monument and he said, when you hear this, uh, you're going to fall down and worship me. And I bet them old Hebrew boys said, well, boys, this is part of the end for us. It's been a good run. Uh, God's blessed us. He's took care of us. But we know we're not going to bow down uh, because the Bible says for us uh, to have no other gods uh, before me. So, boys, you know we can't do that. And I can see as the crowd uh, all begins to bow down uh, when they hear that music and old Shadrach. Rack, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, whatever they was doing, uh, they just totally disregarded uh, that old music like they didn't even hear it. Uh, you know the Bible don't say this, uh, but Jason, it could have been that God didn't even let them hear it. He said, boys, you've done purpose that in your heart, I ain't even going to let it bother you. Amen. Uh, when the music began to play, everybody bowed down, and you know who was standing up? Uh, them three little old pilgrims. Old Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Hey, I want to be in that little old bitty flock uh, that the Bible talks about. The Lord said he had him a little flock. He got him a little remnant of uh, when the world's are bowing down uh, to the things of man and the things of the world. I want to be standing up, Jack Johnson, uh, with the pilgrims, amen, and say I'm not bowing down uh, to the things of the world. I'm not going to succumb to that. It may cost me my job. It may cost me money. It may cost me friends, but you know what? I got a friend in Jesus uh, that stick closer than a brother and I just want to keep on uh, standing tall for him. You know what God more. Hey when you. Hey God just give me this. Hey when you stand up for God uh, he'll get the glory and he'll get the honor. Uh, brother Ricky when they bowed down and that music was playing and them three Hebrew boys stood up. You know where everybody's looking. What do you think? That guy wasn't looking at the statue no more. You know who was getting all the attention? God. How's them three Hebrew boys just standing there looking around? Everybody bowed down, and they're standing up bigger in life. You know what they're doing? They're taking a stand for God. You take a stand for God, you'll get noticed in a crowd, amen. We ain't getting noticed enough nowadays because uh, we ain't taking a stand. Hey, for church folks, that'd have been like, well, we ain't going to bow down to that mess. But we're going to hide when the music starts. God, I ain't bowing. I mean, Lord, these old knees, these old praying knees, Lord, they ain't on the ground. I ain't about them, God. God struck them old hypocrites down. I don't believe them boys hid. I don't believe they run. They done purposed in their heart. That music could start. They said, we're going to trust God. Like, I never even thought about that. 
I, all the attention went to them, Missy. You know who then? They wasn't worshiping that old statue. Wasn't getting no glory. He wasn't getting no honor. Everybody in town, they wasn't talking about, well, Matt, how was it when you just bowed down over our son? Did you enjoy that? No, that's the, what about them three Hebrew children? What about them men of God that ain't bowing down? And boy, old word got back to Nebuchadnezzar. He didn't like that. He wasn't getting no glory. He wasn't getting no honor. He was getting disrespected. If the headlines in the news uh, would have come out there, Justin, on CNN, uh, they wouldn't have said, oh, it was a great day. The music began to blow. And what a scene with everybody bowed down. That ain't what would have been on the headlines. It'd have been like, hey, uh, the music played and everybody was supposed to bow. But there was three old Christians up there uh, that wouldn't bow down down. Uh, they disregarded the king. Uh, let's keep an eye on them. Come back at the 11 o'clock news and we'll show, be show you folks uh, them cast in uh, to the furnace of fire. Uh, stay tuned in. Hey, there's getting more headlines. Uh, God was uh, getting more glory than old Ebenezer got uh, with all of his old big statue. Amen. And that's the same way it'll be. That's why I preached like I did this morning. I want old Ford uh, Free Will Baptist Church uh, to stand tall for God in a world where everybody He's bowing down to the things of the world and not so I'll get a pat on the back and not so you'll get a pat on the back but so that our life will bring glory and honor uh, to the one that bled and died uh, for my unworthy hide, amen. amen. He's deserving of it. Amen. Do you know what? These boys, they come in there. I'm just going to paraphrase it just to save time. The old king come to him. He said, boys, old king needed them boys. It's good at what they done. That's faithful to. I bet they didn't call in sick Jack Johnson. I bet when they added up the money, uh, they wasn't none missing like the king's crowd. I bet the old king, when he had his men in there running the treasury and doing the money, it'd always come up short for some reason. Never come up over. It'd probably come up short. He never could figure it out. Uh, they'd call in to work. They'd lay out drunk. They'd lay out sick. But all of a sudden, when these three boys uh, that God ordained was in the place, uh, man, everything come up just right. Everything runs smooth. Everything was perfect. All the scales was balanced. Old King said, what am I going to do now? He said, I've done told everybody, if they didn't bow down, I'm going to kill them. He said, I really need these boys. And he said, for my own benefit, he calls them off to the side. He said, boys, I heard Jake bowing. Hey, you're making me look bad in front of the crowd. Now, you know I could kill you right now in R2. He said, but I need you boys. I kind of like you fellas. He said, so I'm going to give you a second chance. He said, when you hear the music, he he said, I want you to bow down. And he said, we'll just sweep this under the rug and we'll act like it didn't happen. Uh, you'll look fine. I'll look fine. The headlines will go away. Uh, they'll forget about you if you'll do what I say. He said, oh, king, we are not even careful uh, to answer you. You know what they mean by that in our modern day language? They said, king, you can sit here and talk to us until uh, you're blue in the face. Uh, we ain't got to discuss it among ourselves. Uh, we're serving a true and living God and we ain't going to bow down uh, to your decree. We're going to do what the word of God says. Amen. Amen. The king said, who is this God? He's about to find out. Amen. 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 Who is this God? He said, you're about to find out. He said, boys, we're going to cast you in the fire. They said, let me tell you something, O king. He said, our God, let me read it. I don't want to mess this up. But we will not worship. He said, you cast in the midst of the burning fire. And who art that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said, O King Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able. Ain't you glad he's able tonight? Ain't you glad he's able? That God that they stood up in front of the king and said we ain't going to bow. Our God is able. I'm here to tell you tonight, that's the same God that I'm serving. And whatever my situation that I'm in, uh, when I'm facing fire, when I'm facing death, when I'm facing the world, that same God is my God. And he is able tonight. There's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing impossible with him. I tell you tonight, whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, brother, I've had you on my heart. God is is able if you'll acknowledge him in all your ways he will direct your path amen trust in the Lord with all thine heart trust means a firm belief in the ability reliability and the strength of someone that sounds like my God don't it you 
Hey, man, he's nothing that he can't do. But they said right here, he said, Oh, king, we're not careful to answer thee. He said, Who, Our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Verse 18. Here's what I like. Now, I just kind of got this this week. And especially tonight when I was studying up here. But if not, but if not, he said, be it known unto thee, O king, we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image that thou hast set up. Most of us all know the story. I'm going to get to it in a minute. You know how them movies sometimes, I hate them, Scott. They'll start at the end so you don't know the end and, and then they come back. Well, I'm going to spoil an alert for you. God spared the three Hebrew children. The pilgrims made it. But you know what's the greatest thing to me in this story that hit me today, Adrian? Not that God delivered them. Because you all raised your hand and said, you know he was able, right? So we never question God's ability, right? What questions me is the trust these boys had in God. We're going to serve you, God, and let it be known if we don't make it that we didn't serve and that our God is the true and living God. It's the trust that they had that's the greater miracle to me uh, than God stopping them in the fire because God can do anything. But it's this old weak flesh right here uh, that we have trouble with and it amazes me uh, that the power of God uh, that these boys had on their life that they said we're going to trust God. He, it's like old Joe, even though he slayed me, he said, Lord, I'll trust thee. Do you trust God with your life? In your situation, hey, there's been some time, Brother Dwayne, God's took me down roads I didn't want to go down. Help me tonight now. Brother Laddie, you've been in this thing a long time. I'm sure God's took you down roads and avenues and pointed your life in directions that Laddie Slagle I didn't really want to go. But you know what? He went anyway. You know why? Because he trusted God. He knowed that God knowed best. These boys said, no matter if it cost us our life, O oh, king, uh, let it be made known, we will not serve thy God. Hey, God, help us, hey, man, uh, to have that kind of trust in Almighty God that no matter if they come in here and say, if you go to Old Fort Free Will Baptist Church and you worship, we're going to come in here and lock every one of you up. This is the smallest crowd we've had in three years. We got a bunch of people going on some family reunions. We got a family going to Africa. Uh, we got two or three sick. We got families going off preaching. And like I said, but I tell you what, Jason, what if they come in here tonight and said, if you should Show up Sunday morning. Uh, we're going to lock you up and put you in jail. I wonder if we'd have the same crowds uh, that we've been having or if the pews would be kind of empty. Are you going to trust God or ain't you? Amen. Amen. You say, preacher, that's crazy. That's unreasonable. If time stands and God lets us live long enough, don't you think that can't happen in our lifetime? They'd do it right now if they thought they could get away with it. You know, the only reason we can do what we're doing is because it's Memorial Day and because we're one of the few countries where just about every citizen in the world, in the United States, has got a weapon and they know they can't just come in and do what they want. As soon as we surrender our weapons, uh, we'll be weak That's and they'll come in and do what they want to us. Uh, so we better hang on uh, to these guns and these Bibles and the power of God. It's the same thing. They know if they come in and shut the church doors and get rid of the Christians and then the power of God that they'll be able to do anything they want but that little old remnant uh, we still got power amen uh, we still got pull because we're serving an almighty and true and living God and I'm going to put my trust in him amen. Bible said that old kings hatred was kindled they took them boys the Bible said he got his mightiest men to bind them up Take him over to the fire. He said, heat it up seven times hotter than it's ever been. That's what the devil's doing right now on families and homes, sister. He's turning up a heat hot as he can. He's wanting to destroy us. But you know what? If you're a child of God and you got that anti venom in you I was talking about the other day, that also comes along with a fireproof jacket, amen. 
<laughs> Thank God for that. The Bible said that it was so hot uh, when them soldiers went over there. They didn't have their fireproof coat on. Uh, they'd been bowing down to the wrong man and they listened to the wrong king and it cost them their life. And when they went to push them boys in the fire, the Bible said that those men fell dead and they said they old Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego. The Bible said they fell down into the fire. They're just walking around. I don't even believe they looked over to the brother and said, man, I'm burning up. They was right in the midst of the fire. They wasn't complaining. They wasn't whining. They wasn't murmuring. They was trusting the same God that they trusted last week when everything was going fine. And they was getting their paycheck from the king and his patting them on the back. Uh, they was trusting the same God right then uh, when they got shoved off in the fire. Uh, but you know what? If God wouldn't have delivered them from the fire, uh, they died out with a testimony and they'd have died trusting God. And they'd have died as an example. But you know what? That old king, he's up there on the throne and he's looking down at his mighty men uh, that fell down uh, from the heat of the fire and all of a sudden he looks down in the fire and he said hey boys he said what's going on he said did we not throw three men into the fire and they said yeah king uh, we did he said well get up here and sit where I'm sitting and take a look and they all got up there looking down in the pit they said king what's going on he said I thought we threw three men he said we did he said but there's a fourth man amen uh, walking in the midst of the fire and he said he looks like uh, the son of God how in the world did he know what the son of God looked like uh, when you see him amen uh, you'll be unrecognizable you'll know exactly who he is hey that's the same thing that happened to me uh, when I was sitting on church and old Ross Lewis was preaching and I was sitting about where brother Ronnie was and I could feel the fire of flames on me old Ross was a preaching on hell and all of a sudden there's a little boy spoke to me Mike Morris I'd never heard that voice the way I heard it then. I didn't look over to see if it was dad. I didn't look over to see if it was mom. That was the voice of the fourth man uh, that was in the fire and he whispered to me that day and said you don't have to die and go to hell. I recognized that voice for who it was and what it was and I come that day and I put my trust in him and I ain't been perfect but I ain't never been the same and when I got up that day from that altar he said, son, I'm going to give you a robe of white. I'm going to write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And he said, here, here's your fireproof coat. Don't you go nowhere without it. Thank God for that. Thank God for that. Church, I'm just going, I've been through a few things in my life. And I've trusted the Lord and he's never let me down. I'm just going to keep on trusting, ain't you? I had more, but I'm going to go ahead and close right there. I want to tell you, church, you can trust him. You can trust him with all your heart. What I, I don't know, we're all facing stuff every day. My Lord, in this old times that we live in, we're facing stuff. I, I mean, the suicide teen rates out the roof. I mean, it's just, it's just crazy. The things that go on, the pitiful people that I see are walking up and down my road, that their mind is so strung out on drugs. And if I ain't careful, I'll get hateful and aggravated about them and wish they wasn't even married. But then God will come by and say, that's somebody's little boy or girl at one time. I hate that could have been you. If it hadn't have been for me, it could have been you, son, uh, walking up and down this road. It ain't nothing but the grace of God that we're sitting here tonight. Don't think that we're all made in the image of God. And those walking up and down the street in the situation they're in, uh, they're no different in this flesh and blood that we are. Don't be looking down on them when you go by, say a prayer for them. Uh, God, would you give them another chance? Uh, God, would you show them that you love them? And God, thank you that you saved me and didn't let me get to that situation. I trusted God to get me this far, and I'm just going to keep on trusting him to get me the rest of the way, ain't you? Amen. Diane, come to the piano, please. You can trust him, church. I'm going to be real brief with the altar call. If you're going through some things right now, and the old devil's telling you just to quit. The old devil's telling you there ain't no hope for your situation. God give me this message for you tonight. To say, you can trust me with whatever your situation is. It might look hot and it like, might look fire. And you say, there ain't no way he'll deliver me. Just trust him. Bless you, brother. It might be something little bitty. It might be something big. But I promise you can trust him. 
It's the very same God that delivered them boys from the fire. I began to think about old Daniel. He had a good reputation. They went to the old king and they said, King, you need to make a decree that nobody can pray but just to you. Just for 30 days. But old Daniel purposed in his heart too because he was part of that crowd. Old Daniel could have said, well, it's just 30 days. But the very day of that decree, when they said, if you pray, we'll throw you in the lion's den. The Bible said that Daniel didn't get in his prayer closet and shut the door, that he went and opened his window and he prayed just like before. Those men heard him and went and told the king. And it broke the king's heart because he loved Daniel. And the Bible said that the king stayed up all day and all night trying to fix it, trying to save Daniel. But he was helpless. He couldn't do nothing. The world's helpless in your situation. You can't fix it. The world can't fix it. But that old king, he come to Daniel and he said, Daniel, thy God that you have served continually. What a testimony. He said, he will deliver you. That old unbelieving king seen enough in the life of Daniel and how he trusted God. He said, surely he'll get you out, Daniel. And when the morning come, the old king run down there to the lion's den and he said, oh, Daniel, Daniel, has thy God delivered thee? And the Bible said, no, Daniel stood up and said, oh, king, live forever. And then he went on to spill about God. But I believe that's all the king heard. I believe he went to praising God and to blessing God up for what he done. And later on we see that he had all those accusers thrown in there with the lions. And the Bible said that the lions ate them and break their bones before they ever hit the bottom of the den floor. Just keep on trusting God. Keep on serving Him. And He will avenge you of your adversaries. And that old king made a decree. All because one man stood up for God. And he said, Daniel's God is the one true and living God. He does miraculous miracles in heaven and in earth. And he said, no other God will be served except for the God of Daniel. All because why? Because Daniel trusted God. You can trust him tonight, church. He'll never let you down. I love you. Hope you got some. Be praying for one another this week. Be praying for me. God, just help us to keep on doing what we're doing and putting God first in our lives. If you'll stand, we'll be dismissed. Brother Jack Johnson.